What makes a good hero? There's no one correct answer for this question as it's all a matter of opinion as to what you consider to be an example of a good hero. On one hand, you have extremely powerful, idealistic characters like Superman and, in the realm of pro wrestling kayfabe, Hulk Hogan who rarely lose their battles and serve as a fairly static character in their stories. But on the other hand, you have more realistic characters, with many more layers like Joel from The Last of Us and everyone's favorite anxious millennial cowboy wrestler, Hangman Page. Both of these archetypes have resulted in massively popular characters, and while it once again comes down to the taste of the consumer, I believe that the latter option offers far more possibilities for unique and intriguing storylines focused around the main character as the focal point. How do you do that? How do you craft a character that is more than just an idol, but also a tangible and believable character capable of making a lasting impression on the audience through their imperfections and their journey dealing with them? And more importantly, how do you do it in wrestling? Thankfully, we have the perfect example to analyze. Cowboys are like onions. They have layers. Since the inception of All Elite Wrestling, Hangman Page has been on a hero's journey and in the process has become the best babyface in all of pro wrestling. Now that is a very big statement, but not one that I say lightly. See, Hangman Page is, in my opinion, a perfect millennial babyface. His rise to the top of AEW has been a perfectly crafted story, worth analyzing for a look at how we got to this point. As such, I'm Tempest hailing from Parts Fun Known, and this is how AEW made Hangman Page a perfect millennial babyface. Following the excellent show that was Full Gear, Hangman Page is your new AEW World Champion. A moment filled with catharsis as fans all came together to celebrate the culmination of an epic three-year storyline. But this is not a storyline where Hangman always shined. He was more than just an average, one-dimensional wrestler with a fun gimmick and a catchy catchphrase. He was human, severely flawed, but still good. It is very rare to see a babyface with such depth in American wrestling, which is the reason I wanted to give Hangman Page's run in AEW a proper in -depth depth look. Page's story runs from the very first AEW press event in January 2019 until present day. During this time, he promised to become the first AEW World Champion and failed. He tried to leave the Elite, but the Young Bucks wouldn't let him. He formed a team with Kenny Omega and won the AEW World Tag Team Championship, only further developing the divide between him and his friends and resulting in one of the best tag team matches of all time at Revolution 2020. At the same time, he began drinking. Dealing with his anxiety and lack of self-confidence in a seemingly fun but ultimately destructive way. FTR preyed upon his insecurities and coerced him into betraying the Young Bucks before beating Page and Omega for the tag titles, leaving Page without his friends or his tag partner. He's hit rock bottom. The Dark Order tried to recruit him and despite them having his best interests at heart, he refused. He can't be hurt again. Page racked up wins because while broken, he's still an exceptional wrestler, beating the likes of Matt Hardy and Brian Cage. He didn't want to confront Kenny Omega when the time came for him to be number one contender before the Dark Order convinced him he could win. They lost to the Elite, causing Page to take time away from the ring, believing he was the cause for their defeat. Upon his return, Page put the pieces together, becoming number one contender and finding the confidence needed to finally achieve his goals. He apologized to the Young Bucks and beat Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship at Full Gear 2021. Holy sh**. I need a cigarette after just recapping that. At face value, this is simply a great storyline. However, when you dig a little bit deeper, you can see how much time, effort, care, and commitment went into Hangman Page's journey. And that's the first major component of all this, AEW's detailed storytelling. While all the things I just covered were the main plot points of the storyline, the attention to detail is where this story truly shines. AEW is a company that rewards its fans for paying attention. This goes for Dynamite and Rampage, The Road 2 shows, and Being the Elite, the latter of which played a big role in the weekly progression of this storyline. Hangman asked the Bucks if they would corner him for his match with Chris Jericho at All Out 2019, but they refused due to wrestling a match earlier in the show. This small moment plants the seeds of Paige's split from the Elite months before this started on television. And when Paige eventually did win the AEW World Championship, who was at ringside? The Young Bucks. Even at the start of Paige's partnership with Kenny Omega, the level of detail is immense. Keep in mind that Paige and Omega have never been super close to this point. They were on opposite sides of the Bullet Club Civil War in 2018, and while that detail is not explicitly stated, it makes it much easier to buy into this current storyline. They're friends, just not best friends like Kenny is with the Young Bucks, and when the Elite is caught in a love triangle ahead of Revolution 2020, it's not impossible to believe that Omega could side with the Bucks over his partner because of their pre-existing relationship. Writing a storyline that 
that spans almost three years is very difficult. You need to hold people's attention for a very long time, and with television every week, holding people's attention is not easy. It is this extra level of detail that moves the plot along each week, even if major developments aren't happening. This keeps Paige from becoming a stale character, and that is very important when it comes to the main character of your story. While fans were invested in the story and expected Paige and Omega to break up as a team at some point, no one knew when that point was going to be. Therefore, you had to tune in each week to see if this would be the week that it happened. In doing so, those fans saw all the small progressions of this story. When FTR offer Kenny a beer and he dumps it out, Hangman is standing on FTR's side during the ensuing argument, a small sage direction to help further the story. This continues with Paige congratulating FTR on signing their AEW contract, and when he finally did turn on the Bucks at the behest of FTR, there were two glasses sitting on the table next to Hangman afterward for FTR, who never showed up. Long-term storytelling doesn't work when all of the big matches take place one after the other. The audience will get burnt out and you will burn through your material very quickly, so instead, you have moments like these to tide the audience over while they wait for the big match or angle. If you're paying attention, you will get to see much more of this story than you would have otherwise. This also makes many of the more emotional beats of the story mean that much more when you have that extra context. When Hangman Page tells the Dark Order that he wants to leave the group after their 10-man elimination match, they're understanding and allow him to leave to sort himself out. This is a solid turning point in the story, but it means that much more when you consider that the Elite refused to let Page walk away in 2019. Again, you can watch these moments individually and appreciate them, but the most fulfilling way to watch it is by paying attention to these details because they make Hangman Page's character feel that much more well thought out. However, it's not only this promotion's attention to detail that succeeds in making Page a perfect babyface for this generation, it's also his character and more specifically, the depth of his character. This is where the question I posed at the start of the video will come up again. What makes a good hero? Well, very often in wrestling, the top babyface is forced to overcome a major obstacle in the form of a powerful opponent or group. Think John Cena taking on the Big Show or the Authority. He's considered heroic because he's overcoming these seemingly insurmountable odds, but all of the conflict is external. This led to Cena's character feeling hollow and stale over the years because his motivations never seemed to reach further than being someone who never gave up and his character never changed. To many, he's still a great hero, becoming the most popular wrestler of a generation, but there is a reason that he's compared to Superman so often. Their characters are very reminiscent of each other, and Cena serves as another example of that kind of character writing. Compare that now with Hangman Page. Yes, he still has adversaries to defeat because, well, he is a wrestler, but the biggest conflict that Page has to overcome comes from within. He's much more in line with characters like Joel, who are more relatable and multi-layered. Page had made great strides in his character in 2018 thanks to being the Elite, and was was decently popular when AEW launched, but he was still the fourth or fifth most important member of the Elite at that moment. This is something that ate away at him, and it was this insecurity that caused him to try and leave the group in 2019. It doesn't stop there either. Paige's character grows and changes so much throughout this storyline. At the first AEW press conference, Paige said he wants to be the AEW World Champion, but his motivations are pretty one-dimensional. He wants to be champion because, well, that's just what you do when you're a wrestler. Which is fine, but it didn't go deeper than that. Once he moves into his team with Kenny Omega, Mega, all of the things that are now boiling within him rise to the surface, and this is where Paige really starts to become a great character, and sure enough, it's where he starts to really get over with the crowd. Paige starts drinking to mask his insecurities and his anxiety about his friends being more successful than him. While this begins as a seemingly harmless and fun character quirk, chugging beers with the fans after matches, it soon becomes something much more serious. Paige is always seen with a drink in his hand, and the booze serves not only as a crucial element of the plot, but also as a physical reminder of Paige's internal struggles getting worse worse. Perhaps the most important part of the whole story is when Paige betrays the Young Bucks, costing them a shot at his AEW World Tag Team Championship. Not only because this is a major turning point in the story, but also because in this story, Paige is the reason for his own downfall. It would be so much easier for a babyface to deal with some dastardly thing a heel had done to them, but think about the added emotion that goes into this story because it was Hangman's hubris that caused the negative things to happen to him. Those feelings of guilt, regret, depression, and loneliness all seem that much more powerful because they're lessons that Paige needed to learn before he could grow into the man he needed to be to become champion. A drunk cowboy sounds like a fun gimmick that you might see on NXT 2.0 amidst the crowd of poker players, teachers, Italians, skateboarders, and fake social justice warriors. But Paige has something that none of those other characters have. Character. This cowboy is not just a drinker for no reason. It's a major part of who he is during the storyline, which he's finally able to overcome, tossing aside a beer from the Dark Order and embracing the group after winning the AEW world title. In this generation of mental health being taken far more seriously, traits like anxiety, depression, insecurities, and moderate alcoholism are far more realistic and relatable characteristics than what we've gotten from wrestling
wrestling in the past. Paige is one of the most relatable characters in wrestling today, and that relatability plays a considerable role in making him a perfect babyface for today's wrestling fan. What happens when you combine the plot and the character? Well. You get the story, told to perfection by those involved. The final part of this incredible story that I want to discuss is the role of failure in the narrative. Failure is a very powerful theme in this story. Each time Hangman Page loses, it drastically changes the direction of his story. This is also known as wins and losses mattering, but some people get upset when you bring up that philosophy. Page's character arc kicks off when he fails to beat Chris Jericho at All Out 2019. He loses to Pac and wants to leave the Elite. He and Kenny Omega lose the tag team titles and it ends their entire partnership. Page loses to Omega in the finals of the AEW Eliminator Tournament, and you get to see the Elite prospering together as a team, while Hangman is left out, watching dejected from the tunnel. Finally, Paige and the Dark Order lose their 10-man tag match with the Elite, and it forces Paige to walk away from the group and take time off. Every single loss suffered by Hangman Page in this story has consequences, which only help build interest in the storyline, but it also helps make Page's character even more relatable. Everyone's failed at something in their life. Get a bad grade, get cut from the team, get rejected from university or let go from your job. Everyone can relate to the feeling of failure felt by Hangman Page in this story. Every top babyface needs to face some adversity, but that only makes for a good story if the adversity is allowed to affect the story. Too often if a top babyface loses, it merely means means that the payoff to their big storyline gets pushed back to the next pay-per-view, with no added significance for their eventual win. In this case, it is the complete opposite. Because of how much each of Paige's losses affect him in the story, he is able to grow as a character, overcome his failures, and his own demons, making his eventual win at Full Gear 2021 the most euphoric moment in AEW history, with their perfect babyface finally standing tall. To sum up, how did AEW manage to take the 4th or 5th most popular member of the Elite and turn him into arguably the most organically popular wrestler in the world? They did it patiently, over time with a carefully crafted story filled with character development, relatable characters, and a brilliant ending. How do you make a good hero? You make him feel real.